Google study reveals that half of Americans are losing out with their 401k contributions. Let's get into it. Welcome to another edition of Wired for Wealth, guiding you to achieve lasting financial freedom and peace of mind. I'm John McGregor, your antidote to your financial troubles. My goal for you is, is so you can think better, so you can do better, so you can feel better about your financial situation. All right, let's get into it, folks. We got a lot to cover, but before we do that, you know what to do. Hit that bell below and hit subscribe. So, are you one of nearly the 87 million workers in the United States who have access to a 401k plan? If so, it's a great asset because it's a wonderful way for you to gain wealth for your retirement. For most people, the 401k is all they have for the retirement, and as a result, that is why I highly encourage people to take advantage of them as much as you can. Unfortunately, not everybody who is invested in 401k is getting the most out of it, and that's what we're gonna talk about. First off, I will say the 401k plan is not perfect, and it was never designed to be someone's sole retirement plan. It was meant to be a supplementary plan to someone's pension, not the whole enchilada. But that, sadly, is what it has become. And if that's the case, then we've got to get aggressive with your 401k contributions and the investment process within. Today, sadly, we're seeing fewer and fewer pensions being offered, right? So that's all we have is the 401k. And those pensions that are still available are highly, highly underfunded and are unable or will be unable to follow through on their promises. A lot of them, in fact, the majority of them are underfunded. They've been completely mismanaged. In fact, many of these promised benefits are now being challenged in court. That's right. And the individuals that have worked their entire lives, they've worked their butts off to retire with a pension, are seeing their benefits cut significantly, some up to 50%. So yes, as an armchair quarterback sitting there or a backseat driver, you can poke holes at the 401k all day long. But I will say, in my experience, all those naysayers that I debate with have yet to this day come up with a better solution when I've asked them for one. And when I press them, those people that attack the 401k plan, and I ask them for a better solution, all they say is, John, 401k, bad. And then I'll ask them again, okay, what's your solution? I'm all ears, tell me. And the response, John, 401k, bad. I mean, it's just insane. In fact, I think people that are saying do not invest in a 401k are actually practicing financial malpractice and they're actually harming society. <clears throat> anyway, I can go on a tangent on that. Um, needless to say, 401k is not perfect, as I've said earlier, but if it's the only thing we have, then we've got to take advantage of it. And it's not bad, and I'll get into the numbers in just a moment. Oh, and the naysayers will say, well, well, people need to get financially educated. Great, I could not agree more. But they still need to do something with their money, and they still need to plan for their future. And most people have zero interest in starting their own business or being entrepreneurs. So what do we do as a society with the tens of millions of, of employees who need to take care of themselves and their families for their future? And here's my favorite part. <laughs> here's the hard truth the cynics don't want to admit. Here you go. If you put $12,000 into a 401k or any retirement account for that matter, or any retirement plan, that's $1,000 per month, right? You do that for 30 years at an 8% annual rate of return now keep in mind the overall market, by the way, has done 10% on average. So I'm using 8% to be a little conservative. Now, let me just explain, I'm not talking about 8% every single year. I'm talking about your performance in your plan. Maybe you're up 15 one year and you're down three the next and you're up 20, you're down 10, you're up 12 and you're down six or what have you. you can see this kind of approach, but on average, if you go back the last hundred or so years that they've been tracking the stock market, the, the, the stock market has performed on average a 10% rate of return over time. So again, not 8% every year, but what I'm assuming is if you get an 8% rate of return over time in 30 years, $1,000 a month, take a guess, you will have 1.6 million dollars. And I will tell you, those cynics hate getting those facts in the way of their misguided and dangerous narrative. They can't argue with it, but in the end, they do. 
And they all say, oh, that's hogwash, that's stupid, da, 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 da. And they end up debating a compound calculator. I mean, that's what they're doing. I mean, it's just math. So don't let those naysayers discourage you from taking part in something that could radically change your life. And frankly, when you compare a 401k to a pension, when you're now seeing pension uh, benefits being cut significantly, I would much rather have money in my hand than some hope that some company is going to pay me for the rest of my life when I retire. That's just my opinion. Now, if you can do both, if you've got a pension and a 401k, that's great. But as I said earlier, we're seeing these pensions go away, and many of them, most of them are underfunded. Now, there are pitfalls that many people fall into that frankly is jeopardizing unnecessarily their or your financial future. So let's talk about it. Nearly 40% of people who participate in their retirement plans at work are completely ob oblivious to what exactly they're paying for when it comes to fees. Now, some of these fees are administrative fees, things that none of us can really do anything about. Well, we can do something about it, but really not directly. However, there are some investment fees that can be draining your accounts a lot more than you realize, causing you to lose significant money for that retirement goal that you've set out. And even a small amount of fee can have a great impact down the road over time. So first, we have investment fees. When you first signed up for your 401k plan or retirement plan at work with your employer, you had several investment options, most likely. The vast majority of people who don't have any idea what investment choices to make, so they tend to choose or, or they put, they're put into a target date fund automatically. Does that sound familiar? Or even a risk-based fund um, that they're just put into um, automatically because it sounded easy and it, and it sounded good. Or even worse, people are too afraid to invest their money, so their contributions just sit in, in cash and they don't have any opportunity to grow. Going back to the target date fund, the goal is to invest more aggressively during the earlier years and then move that, amount, move that money into safer investments as your target retirement date approaches. Make sense? Do you follow me? Far too often, I've seen people use this type of investment mostly because they didn't have any idea what the other options were. And it just sounded easy. I'm going to retire at 65. Okay, I'll choose the, the 2040 target date fund that matches with the retirement year. The problem is these can be very expensive plans or, or investment options, often completely obliterating whatever returns those plans might have managed to generate. May not, maybe not obliterate, but have a huge impact on your performance and your returns. You can also choose an actively managed mutual fund. These are well known within the financial industry for charging higher fees. And the mindset here goes that these fee, the, the high fees that you are paying for this type of expertise in fund management. Yes, they can provide decent returns at time that make up for these hefty fees, but you have another option, and that's a passively managed index fund. The focus of a passively managed index fund is to essentially track the performance of the market they follow. The goal is to attain performance levels that are comparable to other markets. For example, if you are part of an S&P 500 index fund, this is a, a, a mutual fund, an index mutual fund that tracks the 500 largest companies in the United States. And it's usually a, a gauge or a benchmark for how the overall market is doing. And these index, these S&P 500 index funds, which you likely have in your plan, are designed to, to track pretty close to how the overall S&P 500 performs, those top, those largest 500 companies in the US. And if you want to minimize the fees you're charged within your 401k plan, then you want to consider these index funds. Another thing to consider is don't lose out on your savings. You work hard for your earnings, right? Putting into a 401k or a retirement plan at work, 457 or 403b, they're all pretty much the same, is a great decision to make, as I mentioned earlier. 
Yet at the same time, you don't want to miss out on better returns because the fees you get charged are consuming a lot of what you are gaining. And like I said earlier, even a small fee, and I've heard this before, well, John, it's only 2%. Um, you know, I know I could probably be paying 1% or, or, or less. That difference between what you're paying versus what you could be paying is like a snowball going down the hill. It will accumulate fast and that's just money that you are leaving on the table and frankly wasting. So going back to the administrative fees when it, within, the, within your retirement plan, if those fees are considered too high in your estimation, then there are, there are other retirement saving options available. The main goal is to focus on keeping fees to an absolute minimum because I've, I've always said, fees can be a great destroyer of wealth over time. But fees are inevitable. The key is to pay reasonable fees for the services being rendered. The best course of action for that may be to stick with the index funds for your retirement plan at work. Because the money you can save on investment fees with these index funds, you will find that these funds can actually outperform those managed funds, those high-priced managed funds over time. Now, let me ask, is your retirement target date realistic? I've actually seen this mistake quite often. A person gets a job with a major company, they celebrate, it's, it's a wonderful feeling, right? They may be in their late 20s or 30s and, and they've been striving to get a job with this employer for some time and this salary. Then they get the interview and the second interview and the offer and it's awesome to have worked so hard for so long and feel finally rewarded for your efforts and your education and of course, your achievements. During the orientation, you may recall, they, they may have gone through a number of videos, listened to a, a history of the company, uh, snippets on the company's mission and vision. They filled out copious volumes of forms and documents, signing here and there and everywhere. You may have been through the drill. Then it came to the benefits option, including the retirement plan. When they're at that age, they may be dreaming about retiring at, at 50 or 55, and, and, uh, and, and so they set their target date for that desired date in the future. However, things change, right? With marriage, children, and plenty of other responsibilities that find them along those years between signing up with the retirement plan and that original target date, everything can change. They once thought they were gonna retire, or they wanted to retire at 50 or 55, and now they become focused on a retirement age of 60 or 65 instead. Yet they rarely ever think about the retirement plan, especially if they chose a target date fund when they started in the job, when they had those lofty dreams earlier, right? And that could lead to a number of problems and lost money. So let's go back and consider what typically happens with the target date funds. Remember that I said in the earlier years, those investment strategies tend to be more aggressive the investments may be considered riskier in the sense of going after a potentially higher rate of return because you're younger and you can afford to take that risk. Yet, as the target date gets closer, the investments within that target date fund are shifted to something less vol uh, volatile, more stable, and that generally means lower returns. It's not a bad idea at all. But if a person sets the retirement date at 50 originally, but as they raise kids and take on all those other expenses, they come to accept the fact that retirement will most likely happen at 65. Then their target date fund investment, that strategy, will be safe with a low yield at a lot longer than it could have been. Are you, making, are you following me here? So if you continue with a target date fund with your 401k or your retirement plan, make sure you re revisit the target date often. Don't become complacent and forget that you set it earlier. This number, the year of your anticipated retirement, is what managers use, the money managers use to determine which investments are best for you to pursue. If you give them inaccurate information or out, outdated information, don't expect things to work out in your favor for very long. But John, what if I don't know any of this information? I know, I have to be blunt, people use this I don't know card when it comes to their company retirement plans. And I will say that's not good enough. It should never be an excuse. Sure, the HR department in your company might be standoffish, and just because they're in HR does not mean they have a clue on money management and how the 401k or retirement plan works. 
They may dismiss you and your questions more times than you can count, but this is your money. This is serious business. Just because you may not know what you originally signed up for, what administrative or investment fees you're being charged, or how to change your strategy or target date, that doesn't mean you can't learn. Tough love here, folks. Be persistent. Approach this as if it's a matter of urgency. Why? Because it is. This is your life. This is your future we're talking about. Your financial future. Your retirement. I mean, how many more, more important things are there other than your family and your health? I mean, money's gotta be in your top three, I would think, or top five. Just ask yourself the simple question. Would you rather not say something now and realize you lost thousands of dollars or even more from, from your retirement accounts later? I don't think so. Or speak up now and have the most money possible in your accounts once you actually do retire. If it was me, I would bypass the HR de uh, department altogether and go straight to the provider of your plan. Most have solid customer service and you can even reach out to the advisor on the plan. They are always willing to help. Remember, over 40% of Americans who have retirement plans are leaving way too much money on the proverbial table simply because they don't know uh, enough to ask about these details. Don't make that mistake. Oh, and remember, if the administrative fees are exorbitant, they shouldn't be, you may find it better to invest elsewhere. Before you do though, consult with a reliable, qualified financial advisor who can help you determine if the fees are stripping out all the gains your 401k is earning. I hope that has opened your eyes a bit. And if you know someone who this may be appropriate for, please do them a favor and forward this on. You could really be helping somebody else out. As I always say, it's never too late to start your journey to financial freedom and peace of mind. You have the greatest power, and that's the power of choice. Your financial life and future is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. It's your choice. And if you make it a priority, you can and will reach your goals. I've got a ton of free resources on my website that you can download right now to start your journey to the financial life you deserve to live. And I'm also super excited to announce that my online course called Thrive Path, the revolutionary process to your financial freedom and peace of mind is available now. This process, Thrive Path, I guide you through is scientifically designed to transform not only your bank account, but it's designed to transform your entire life together. It's scientifically designed process that includes five key elements that I and so many other people who have achieved financial freedom have used and embraced. It's a mind-blowing program, and I urge you to take a look at my website. And it's unlike any other financial program you've seen before, and I will say it is a game changer if you follow the process. All right, with that, we'll see you in the next episode. Don't forget, hit subscribe, leave a comment. Would love, love to hear from you. Till next time, take care, upward and onward. We'll see you. Bye-bye.